AMC stock at the time of recording this video is up 1.61% on the day. And notice, like we talked about yesterday, shorts are terrified of $6 per share. They want to do whatever they can to keep the stock under $6. Dollars Right now, AMC stock is $5.99 per share, and look how flat you are. You ripped up in the beginning of the trading day, opening at about $5.75 per share, and look at it. I mean, it's textbook. Every time you get to $6 per share, or $6.01 per share as a, a key level, you're falling. Now, you're not falling that much. You're staying relatively pinned right up against $6 per share, even as the markets have been very much back and forth today. I mean, you're down on the S&P 500 about 0.13%. If we go ahead and pull this up so we can see today's trading alone, I mean, it's been a pretty downward trajectory and AMC stock is what, pinned? Why is this happening? Well, obviously... They're terrified of $6 per share. They're down on their equity positions. They're down factoring in the cost of borrow fees well in excess of 100%. So for good reasons, they are terrified. Now, we will talk about this a little bit more towards the end of the day when we get a solidified uh, kind of closing price or where AMC is going to go throughout the rest of the day today. But here in this video, we need to talk about the breaking news that is coming out or at least the articles that are talking about this breaking news and it comes down to the court situation so let's get into all of this information hit the like button subscribe to the channel source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section if you guys also want to come trade with me live in real time link down below in the description of this video we are adding uh, different kind of trading strategies and, and breaking those down of the ones that I really like to use. For example, we just added how to do the ghetto spread in here. And that is essentially how you can day trade unlimitedly with an account less than $25,000. It's essentially legging into a vertical spread is uh, what it's called. But it's a great strategy to be able to essentially day trade and uh uh, not get flagged as PDT. Again, not financial advice. If you guys want to join, link down below in the description of this video. That is the sponsor of each and every single one of these videos because we do not push paid promotions on any of you guys. I'm not going to try to push something on you that I would not personally use myself. Nonetheless, let's get into it. And first things first, there's this article. AMC skids on settling class action. Now, they're, they're, they're talking about how AMC stock was down in pre-market today. Um, obviously, that really is not relevant right now. AMC stock is, is not down. It's up 1.5% still, even as the S&P 500 is starting to fall a little bit more. And what this is, is an official document. Here's the document. Uh, from the Court of Chancery, the state of Delaware, AMC actually filed this, and it's the Notice of Pendency of Stockholder Class Action and Proposed Settlement uh, Hearing and Right to Appear. Basically, an official document um, about the settlement, right, saying that all parties have agreed to the settlement. If you look at this article, it says, uh, AMC stock falls, apes rise on stock conversion agreement. Again, the same information that we have had, right? This has already been confirmed that Allegheny Pension or County Pension Fund or Retirement Fund has agreed to this, right? The other people that were suing AMC have already agreed to this. This is not new information, but it's coming across the newswire today as if it is new information. Now, in this tweet that AMC Theaters put out, it says, AMC has recently reached an agreement to settle a punitive stockholder class action concerning the proposed conversion of AMC preferred equity units into common stock and reverse stock split. The settlement agreement, settlement notice, and a letter and form of the court can be located on AMC's website. Uh, and there's the link and it pulls you up to that full article or full document that I just looked at. It says, AMC stockholders who are class members have the right to object to the settlement and the deadline to do so is May 31st, 2023. And this tweet actually came out May 6th, which was what? Saturday. 
So it's coming across uh, the news wires as if this is some breaking news, but AMC stock probably recovered whatever loss we were, you know, down like two or three percent in pre-market because people are like, hey, we've already known this. This is not new information. We're waiting for the courts to say something. This is no new information from the courts. And, and that's the biggest thing to keep in mind. The judge has not made a ruling on this. Nothing has changed from on Friday to now on Monday. Nothing has changed here. But it's coming across the news wires as if something has changed. And I do want to uh, point that out for you guys. Now, more breaking news. AMC plans to launch its own candy label. This is also coming out today as of May 8th, coming out here about an hour ago. It says, quote, we noticed recently as a result of the pandemic and the supply chain shortages that candy manufacturers have increased their prices uh, to us by a huge amount, Aaron said, according to a transcript from Seeking Alpha. Quote, some candy makers increasing their cost for wholesale candy as much as 33% in one time in a one time bump. That's kind of thinking very hard about our candy. And we realized that we can manufacture a private label, br private label brand of candy to very high quality standards. Price is less expensively than our current candy is priced and have a higher profit margin. So AMC breaking into their own line of candy. And in the earnings call, Adam Aaron said for the food and beverage per Patreon spending in April, it is higher than what it was in the first quarter. We are killing it, quote, in F and B, our F and B spending per Patreon pre-pandemic was around five dollars sixty cents. In the first quarter, it was seven dollars ninety nine cents. So, while a lot of things have not fully recovered to pre-pandemic levels, the food and beverage sector of AMC's business has done better than pre-pandemic levels. And I think that's just showing kind of where AMC is going to be once everything does get back in line right, to pre-pandemic numbers, the attendance levels and the box office numbers. I mean, you're going to have better overall numbers. Give it one year's time uh, than even pre-pandemic. And AMC should be making uh, a lot more in profits than they did pre-pandemic. And I think this is a very interesting move to make your own candy. That's that's interesting. And considering AMC sees so many guests Every quarter, you know, what they see, like 50 million guests uh, last quarter alone. It, it can be incremental, right? If, if they're going to make, uh, you know, 50 million more, call it off of their own branded popcorn every quarter could be uh, a, a, a pretty big deal. So those are the two bits of breaking news that are coming out here today. As well as this, this is definitely going to help things out. It says Simplex scored its highest combined April box office and theater food service revenues of all time at more than 105 million Canadian dollars. The Canadian theater chain stated that more than 4.8 million people walked through its doors last month in its Q1 2023 results. AMC Entertainment reported its revenue grew by 21.5% uh, uh, year-on-year to 954.4 million. So, uh, you know, definitely a positive development to see other theater operators having positive results as well. Uh, again, supporting the box office recovery. So some news here and there coming out today. Not huge new information, though, in regards to the court situation. And that is really the thing that investors need to know, right? If the judge is going to confirm this and let this settlement go through, if we are going to get an outright denial of this, if they're going to say we need a revote, things of that nature are going to be what really drives AMC's share price. And to see things like this coming across the newswire is breaking news, where it's it's trying to say like something changed, nothing changed here. So keep that in mind if you guys are seeing those kind of articles. And trust me, when something does change and it's bullish or bearish, you will see it reflected in AMC's share price, especially since AMC is at six dollars per share if this goes through amc is going to fall quite a bit initially now after that if amc does raise a lot of capital typically that does lead to a rally in amc stock and i don't think this time would be any different i think you would also get a rally right every time amc has raised capital the stock is rallied and i think that goes to show it's crushing the short thesis 
Uh, because if AMC is not going to go bankrupt, that's the reason ultimately shorts have been in these short positions. So uh, long story short, you'll know when new information does change. Now, as far as AMC's numbers, we're getting a live estimated short interest off your flow at 24.44%. Keep in mind the last exchange reported short interest number we got was 26.62% short interest of free float. So you really got to take these numbers with a huge grain of salt because they're likely not very accurate. It could be true that that we get the the next official report and AMC short interest is 27.28 to 30% short interest. That is always a possibility. Now, the dollar amount currently sold short in AMC stock sits at about $749 million. Short interest or uh, estimated um, free flow out on loan at 31%, 160 and a half million shares currently out on loan days to cover 4.61 cost to borrow at 217.86%, 100% share utilization. If we look at the live cost to borrow average numbers, 310% cost to borrow max 328 and a half percent cost to borrow minimum at about 65%. These numbers are just too high. Let's be honest. Shorts are, are, are getting whacked on their short positions when these numbers just won't go down. Like I'm surprised these numbers are, are so stubborn around 300%. I'm not going to complain. It's definitely a, you know, overall positive for us that these shorts are losing hundreds of millions of dollars per month, $2 billion of losses to cost of borrow fees alone in Q1 2023. That's nothing to sneeze at. That's three times the value of the total short positions in AMC stock. So it's a very big deal. The higher these fees stay for longer, well, the better it is for a potential short squeeze. Nonetheless, the option activity for this week, you're looking at 18,000 calls currently in the money, 78,000 calls out the money, 22,000 puts in the money, and 104,000 puts that are out of the the money. So there you have that. As far as data for today, you did get some bond auctions coming through earlier in the trading day at about 11, um, 11 o'clock AM. Didn't really move things around all too much. Kind of came in line with expectations. Tomorrow, you're going to get some more bond auctions and the New York Fed Treasury purchases zero to one year. Uh, you're expecting about $80 million. So we'll see what that comes out at uh, 10 o'clock or 10 30 in the morning tomorrow could move things likely will not. And then on Wednesday, you're obviously going to get inflation. That's going to be the big driver of this week. Importantly as well, the debt ceiling. Now, last time we faced debt ceiling crisis or a debt ceiling crisis was back in 2011. Now, what's interesting about that is May 2nd, 2011 was the peak of that that market, right? And when the markets at that time started to fall. Now, what do you notice again? Well, May 1st was the technical peak, but you started falling really on May 2nd. You were down 1.12% May 2nd. You fell a little bit down to about $400 on the SPY. You've come back up since you have gotten good relatively good uh, earnings reports out of Apple and other large tech players. And now you're in this weird state of limbo. Last time in 2011, you didn't default on debt. The United States has never defaulted on their debt, but the S&P downgraded American debt. So that means, you know, uh, higher interest rates. That means um, just a lower credit score, basically, right? That's that's what a, a downgrade of, of debt would mean. And you fell about 21% from the peak to the low during this crisis. And a vast majority of this fall actually happened within really like a like a 10-day period, right? You fell like 18% in 10 days. Uh, so you want to watch to see how that is. Granted, we know the X day is going to be June 1st. I think as we get closer to June 1st, you're going to see more fear start to get baked into the markets. And I think the markets will start to react a lot more to the debt ceiling situation because you don't have to default on debt. You just have to get close to defaulting on debt for credit agencies to start downgrading American debt, downgrading um the credit worthiness of America. And that's where the real problem is. It's not necessarily in the default. It's in 
that credit downgrade. And that's what could cause a problem. And after all, markets are projecting the first rate cut as soon as July. That means something would have to break. This would actually be historical. Even during 1987, that was the last time you've seen the Fed hike rates and then cut them in less than 60 days. Meaning that if we do get a rate cut in July, that would be historic. And the last time that actually happened where the Fed hiked rates and then cut them less than 60 days later was during Black Monday when the stock market fell 20% in a single day. And that was in 1987. So not a good precedent there. Watch to see how much this starts to eke into our markets and starts to cause a little bit more of that downside pressure. Nonetheless, guys, that is going to do it for your intraday update. We covered a lot of ground in a very short amount of time. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. If you guys also, like I said, want to come trade with me live in real time, link down below in the description of this video. We do have some earnings coming in here in after hours that you want to keep your eyes on me specifically. It's PayPal, Palantir, Devon Energy, and Luke. Lucid, those are going to be the big earnings today and after hours. Guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.